Hi, my name is John Hay and I am a certified ethical hacker. I would advise my clients to take ransomware very seriously and approach the problem in a manner where they assume that they will be a victim of ransomware. If they assume they're going to be a victim and they plan to be a victim, then the effects of ransomware, should it happen, will be much less. If they use their backup continuity and disaster recovery plan and include aspects of ransomware within that, they should plan and they should educate their staff regarding the back backup continuity and disaster recovery plan and they should also test it on a regular basis to iron out any problems that they have. Um, go back to basics, simple things like check your firewalls, check you have a good level of security and set up and maintenance on your firewall. Make sure you do simple things like patching. Make sure you only provide access to staff who need access. Make sure login credentials, etc., are up to date and there's no superfluous logins available. Keeping it simple and working with staff with their education is key to this. Make sure the staff know what ransomware is and how it gets into an organisation. This isn't just your IT staff, but every member of staff within an organisation needs to know the risk and how to identify when something has gone wrong. The most recent ransomware trend that has caused me concern is the double extortion. Um, not only are criminals asking for a ransom to return your data, but they're now asking for a ransom to stop them releasing this data into the public domain. This could see personal information of individuals um, open to anybody, sold to the highest bidder, or put out there just to embarrass a company. Where previously the ransomware only affected an organisation, which can seem relatively faceless, we're now talking about a big effect on individuals. It's a very human effect and could have a big change on someone's life and have a big effect on their finances. And that's not pleasant for an individual. It's not easy to condone the paying of ransom to criminals. However, it's a decision that would need to be taken by the business leaders. There are many things to take into consideration. And it's not just the company's reputation and the loss of data, but there's the potential that if that organisation cannot become, become up and running again without their data, there are many jobs that could be on the line. And if people lose their jobs, that's potentially losing the roof over their heads and the food on the table. And looking at the bigger picture, sometimes paying the ransom is potentially the only hope that organisation could have. I think there are many reasons why criminals are very rarely brought to account for ransomware. And one large one is jurisdiction. These criminals are operating across borders and they're borders that frequently do not have the extradition rules in place to help prosecute. Another reason is the laws themselves. Very few countries in the world keep their laws up to date and are being able to deal with ransomware effectively. Another reason would be the lack of reporting. There's still a great deal of stigma attached to being a victim of ransomware. You're not seen as the victim. You are seen as someone who had weak security and was not trying to protect their data adequately. And this is often not the case. The last really big reason would be the evidence gathering. It is difficult for an organisation to justify gathering all the evidence they need for law enforcement. This can often delay the recovery of an organisation and that can be very costly in the recovery process. I think this would be a, a two-pronged attack. There's the practical steps you have to take. You have to identify the attack to start with. You then have to find out how the attack got into your organisation. You have to block that entrance to make sure it doesn't return later on, if that is possible. You then have to cleanse your entire network. Make sure that the software is no longer there 
there's no point in even beginning to recover your organisation if there's a risk of the whole process repeating itself. And once you have cleansed it, you need to double check and triple check your work. It's going to be worth the effort to do this, to make sure that it doesn't return. And then you begin your recovery. Most likely this will be from backup and it will take some time. And that is where the second prong of the attack really comes in. The management have to be on the side with this. They have to be able to deal with the stakeholders that are involved. They have to be able to manage the expectations. They have to act as a liaison between the stakeholders and the technical teams who are commencing the recovery. If the people who are doing the actual recovery are constantly being interrupted, they will make mistakes. It's important to let them get on with their job and they will do it as quickly and as safely as they possibly can. So the management aspect has to be there and it is very important and should not be overlooked. I think modern encryption methods are very effective and they're always evolving to become more effective. Now they've been great over the years at keeping our information safe, but these same encryption methods are now being used to withhold our information and for malicious purposes. And that is why it makes it so difficult to decrypt files or to crack the hacker's codes, simply because they're using the same encryption that keeps us safe. I think the biggest takeaway I took is the number of missed opportunities an organisation has to not become a victim. It comes back to doing some very basic things to ensure that an organisation is safe. Also, we see that it's not a single vulnerability that puts it at risk. It's generally a catalogue of failings with an organisation that allow uh, an attacker to gain access and deploy ransomware through an organisation. And we also see that ultimately it's the human element. It is very often a human that will make a mistake and allow an attacker into an organisation.